Hi, I'm Mike Rosen. I'm the chair of the Department of Biophysics at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. I'm here this afternoon with two members of my laboratory, Jacob Zahm, a graduate student, Shay Padrick, an instructor, and together we're going to tell you about a paper of ours that was recently accepted in Cell titled The Bacterial Effector Vapel Organizes Actin into Filament-like Structures. My lab studies the signaling mechanisms that control dynamic rearrangements of actin in eukaryotic cells. Now, the rearrangements of the cytoskeleton are hugely important in a wide range of cellular processes, ranging from cell motility and adhesion, to the endocytosis and intracellular trafficking of vesicles, to cell division. All of those processes require dynamic rearrangements of the actin cytoskeleton. Pertinent to today's discussion, a variety of bacterial and viral pathogens also hijack the cytoskeleton during infection. In cells, actin forms filaments. These are composed of a pair of strands of actins held together by a characteristic dimeric interface. Actin monomers add readily to the end of this existing filament, but initiation of the filament is very slow as it requires bringing together three actin monomers in a specific configuration to produce a nucleus. Because this process is so slow, cells have evolved numerous nucleation factors that accelerate it. These include the ARP2-3 complex, formins, and a class of nucleation factors defined by an actin binding motif called the WH2 domain. The bacterial pathogen Vibrio parahemolyticus produces a molecule called VAPL that nucleates actin filaments in infected eukaryotic cells. VAPL was discovered here at UT Southwestern by our colleague Kim Orth. VAPL has a C-terminal domain that we call the VCD that nucleates actin filaments on its own. Adjacent to the VCD is a tandem array of actin-binding WH2 motifs that greatly enhance VAPL's activity. In order to understand how this molecule nucleates actin filaments, we sought to solve the crystal structure of the VCD in complex with actin. The structures told us a great deal about the mechanism by which VAPL nucleates new actin filaments. In solution, the VCD is a constitutive dimer. I've colored the two halves of that, red and blue, here. The VCD contains an elongated base with two arms attached at either end. Now each arm binds to a total of two actin monomers. So beginning with the red arm, one monomer binds to the tip of the arm, and a second monomer binds to the side of the arm, as well as the side of the base. Now critically, the actin dimer formed here closely resembles two actins taken from the paired strands of an actin filament, and I'll come back to that. Now the blue arm is chemically identical to the red arm, and it also binds to two actin monomers. One monomer binds to the side of the arm, and a second monomer binds to the tip of the arm. Now you can see by the way I did that, in fact, one of the actin monomers is shared between the two arms. So the monomer I'm holding my hand here binds to the tip of the red arm as well as to the side of the blue arm. What that means is together, the two arms bind to a total of three actin monomers. And moreover, that trimer closely resembles three actin monomers taken from an actin filament, as you can see here. And we think that this is the essence of nucleation by VAPL, and that is that the VCD organizes three actin monomers into a filament-like nucleus, to which additional monomers can add, producing a bona fide filament. As I mentioned previously, the activity of the VCD is greatly enhanced by the presence of an N-terminal array of actin-binding WH2 motifs. We sought to understand the basis for this enhancement by asking whether the actins in our structure can accommodate binding of these WH2 motifs. In our structure, the WH2 array emanates from the VCD base approximately here. The first WH2 motif could bind easily to the nearest actin in a known binding cleft. In a similar fashion, the next WH2 motif could bind to the next actin within the same strand. The remaining actin on the opposite strand could readily accommodate the most proximal WH2 motif supplied by the other VAPL monomer. This leads to a nucleation model, wherein the WH2 arrays recruit actins with high affinity and deliver them to the VCD, which organizes them into a filament-like structure that serves as a nucleus. In the full-length molecule, there are a total of six WH2 motifs. 
It's likely that in this context, the molecule functions according to the same general plan. However, it's unclear whether nucleation proceeds through a hexameric nucleus or through an ensemble of structures with different stoichiometries. In fact, this is something that we are still actively arguing about in the laboratory on a regular basis. We note that the actins in our structure are not identical to those in a canonical filament. One key difference is that in the filament, a loop from an adjacent actin monomer must bind into the cleft where the WH2 binds. Thus, in the bonafide filament, the WH2 must be displaced, decreasing affinity between Vopel and the nucleated filament. This is consistent with the observations from Dominguez and Kovar, who found that Vopel does indeed fall off within a few seconds of nucleation. Interestingly, formins also bind actin in a conformation not quite that found in a filament. These deviations are thought to allow formins to ride on the end of a growing filament. This is distinct from ARP23 complex, which appears to form a structure much closer to that found in a filament and stays persistently attached following nucleation. Thus, the degree of deviation from the canonical filament may control the dynamics of nucleation factors following nucleation. Two questions at this point is when does, if there's a conformational rearrangement that has to occur, when does that occur relative to the addition of new monomers? With the formins were Maybe yeah, there's right. a difference right at the end that's growing. Yeah. And that can the filament can tolerate regions of kind of perfect filament and strained filament or distorted filament. So it's possible that it actually undergoes a concerted transition all at one time. Uh, and that all the WH2s dissociate simultaneously, but then the flop L remains bound through binding to the side of the nucleated filament. Yeah. And, and I, I think. You know, we, we don't know enough to know whether it has to be concerted or whether it could be.